Hi guys! I am out on my back patio today enjoying this nice warm sun. As you can see I have to wear my sunglasses because the sun is right in front of me and very bright. So I'm gonna wear my sunglasses while I read this story to you. It is called Bumblebee at Apple Tree Lane. So the author of this story is Laura Gates Galvin. She wrote the words and the illustrator is uh, Kristen Kest. Remember the illustrator, she writes the, or draws the pictures. So the same person who drew the pictures is not the same person who wrote the words in this story. In April, when the air is pleasantly cool and the sun shines brightly, Southern New England is waking up after a long winter's nap. Dandelions dot green lawns. These are dandelions. Early migrating birds have returned home from the south and tiny new leaves adorn branches of trees. Behind a small stone in a behind a small stone wood cottage on Apple Tree Lane, a fuzzy black and yellow bumblebee has just crawled out from underground after a long hibernation. So remember, we talked about how in the winter, some, some animals migrate, some animals hibernate, and some animals adapt. So this story is already talking about birds that have um, come back from migrating, and it talks about the bumblebee who is just coming out of hibernation. Bumblebee's body, like the air, is cool. She cannot fly until she is warmer. Without moving her wings, she vibrates her powerful flight muscles to generate heat. She is warm and she, when she is warm, she rapidly beats her wings until she is airborne. That means she's flying. A patch of white clover grows against a picket fence. Bumblebee eagerly visits the fresh blooms and sips the nectar for energy for, from her long winter's sleep. But she doesn't stay long. Bumblebee has a lot to do to prepare for the months ahead. Okay, so nectar is kind of like, um, it's food for uh, a lot of insects and uh, including butterflies and even hummingbirds. They like nectar and they'll drink it out of flowers. And um, it's kind of like sugar in a way, it gives them energy. Her first task is to find a home site. She devotes the next few days to looking for an abandoned nest. A bird's nest or a mouse's nest would be just right for her. Bumblebee flies slowly close to the ground, stopping often to investigate likely spots. Near the garage in the hollow of a birch tree, she finds an abandoned field mouse nest. She spends the next few days cleaning her new home. How do you think she cleans her home? What do you think she needs to do? She probably doesn't have a broom or a vacuum, right? So, hmm, I wonder what she does. After Bumblebee has removed all the leftover sticks and dirt from her nest, she begins to shape a little honey pot from wax, which is pressed out from between her abdominal segments. When she is finished shaping the honey pot, she leaves her nest to visit more spring blossoms. Okay, so now we know how she cleaned her nest. She took all the sticks and dirt out of it. So she got it all clean that way. She prob it probably took her a long time to do that because she's not very big. On this visit to the flowers, Bumblebee sips the nectar and stores it in her crop or stomach. When she returns to her nest, Bumblebee fills the honey pot with nectar. She will save this nectar to drink on a rainy day. Wow, that's pretty smart, isn't it? Did you know the bumblebees were that smart? Bumblebee builds another waxen cell, this one to be used for her eggs. She lays eight eggs and covers them with a wax cap. Like a brooding hen, Bumblebee settles down on her nest and keeps her eggs warm. Okay, so she laid eggs and she's gonna keep them warm just like chickens do. Only uh, chicken eggs aren't in a sack like this. She made a little sack for them to be in. That's kind of cool. She protects them that way. 
After five or five days later, Bumblebee's eggs begin to hatch into larva. Bumblebee will continue to keep the larva warm with her body, but she must also feed them. She flies directly to the apple tree near the back porch. As she crawls out from one blossom to another, collecting nectar, pollen from other blossoms sticks to her tiny hairs that cover her body. Using her two forelegs and her two midlegs, she brushes the pollen into the small baskets in her hind legs. When her pollen baskets are full, she returns to the nest. Bumblebee places the pollen in small pockets on the side of the honey pot for the larva to eat. Wow, that's amazing. So pollen is what's inside of plants. Uh, Today there's a lot of pollen in the air because it's springtime and the plants are beginning to grow and part of what happens when plants grow is they produce pollen to create other plants. But the, the larva, the bumblebee larva, eat the pollen. So it serves many purposes, the pollen does. A week later, bumblebees' fat, well-fed larvae spin themselves into separate cocoons. Even though bumblebee must still keep her cocoons warm, she is busy with other things too. She makes more cells beside the clump of cocoons and lays more eggs. She also takes occasional trips outdoors for more nectar. So she has to go out and get more nectar to keep her energy up, right? She's doing a lot of work. She's creating new sacks and uh, for new eggs and she's got to keep the cocoons warm. She is a busy bumblebee, which makes her tired. She needs to get energy by eating the nectar. Two weeks have passed. It's the middle of May and spring is in full bloom. The air is warmer and the days are longer and the flowers are plentiful. Bumblebee has just helped her first set of bees out of their silken cocoons. Eight damp, silvery gray worker bees, all female, crawl to the honey pot for their first meal as adults. All right, so I don't know if you can see down here, that shows where the bees are in there. This is a, a beetle right here. The beetle might go, be going up there to get some, some uh, pollen or some nectar, excuse me, also. <clears throat> Bumblebee's daughters are good workers. They will feed the next batches of larvae and help keep the nest clean. From glands in her body, Bumblebee releases a certain chemical scent that tranquilizes her daughters, causing them to take good care of her eggs and larvae until late summer most of the eggs will hatch into females and bumblebee the queen will stay busy laying more and more eggs so when it says it tranquilizes her daughters that means that um it gives them it makes them so that they are not able to fly off and leave and so then they she, they stay at the nest and take care of the new uh, eggs that the that the Mom bum, Mama Bumblebee is laying. By August, summer is in full swing. The days are long and humid. The wildflowers have become scarce in the woodland shade. Bumblebee's nest is a flurry of activity. Like a ceiling fan, three bees hover at the top of the nest, vibrating their wings vigorously to circulate the air and keep the nest cool. I don't know if any of you have ceiling fans in your house, but this is what, that's kind of what they're doing is uh, they're moving their wings really, really fast so that it moves the air around like a fan does. Probably makes it more comfortable in the nest for the mom, for the mama bumblebee. As workers fly out of the, out of the nest to visit flowers, others return from their outdoor trips with baskets of full pollen and honey sacks filled with nectar. Empty cells have been cleaned out and made into larger tanks where the workers deposit the nectar and pollen. Bumblebee is still busy laying eggs. She hasn't been out of the nest for a while. She crawls over to one of the honey pots and sips some of the thick honey for energy. 
So they're making honey in there, you guys. That's pretty cool. And now the mama does not have to leave. She can just go and get some of the honey from one of the pots in there. While the bees work frantically, a carpenter ant enters the nest. An alarmed worker lifts up her middle legs into the air to threaten the intruder. The ant doesn't move forward, but it does leave the nest. Doesn't leave the nest either. Without hesitating, the bees flip her onto her back and open her jaws as if they're ready to bite. She also points her stinger in a warning at the ant. This time, the ant wastes no time and scurries out of the nest. So see how she's doing this? She's showing her stinger. Here's her stinger right here. She's showing it. We can't really see her teeth very well, but it says she has her teeth open to scare the ant. And the ant leaps. Uh, it, it gave you a new word. It said intruder. Have you guys ever heard that word before? Intruder means that somebody going, somebody or something, in this case an ant, going someplace where they don't belong. They're not supposed to be there. That's an intruder. When October arrives, the air is brisk and the landscape is a burst of red and orange and yellow. Bumblebees' last batches of eggs have hatched, but these eggs have not produced workers. Instead, they have developed into new clean bees and male bees. These males won't stay in the nest long, but will leave to mate with the young queens from other nests. Oh, so the mama, the mama bumblebee was a queen, uh, and then she started having babies, so that makes her the queen bee. Unlike the workers, bumblebees, young queens, don't do a lot in the nest. They need to store their fat so that they can live underground all winter. The workers and the males won't survive the winter. As the air gets cold, they will die. Bumblebee might survive one more season. She and her queens will part and go underground for winter. In the spring, each bee will emerge from the underground, from underground and find a suitable nest lay her eggs and begin once more the cycle of bumblebee colonies near the cottage on Apple Tree Lane. <laughs> that was cool, you guys. We learned so much about what bumblebees do and why they're so important. Now, bumblebees have stingers and they can sting us, but most of the time, they won't sting us. Most of the time, bumblebees are more afraid of you than you are of them. So remember how important their job is. Not only are they busy laying a lot of eggs, but their main job is to pollinate the flowers and to make honey for us. So it's important to have bumblebees outside. When you guys are outside playing, I want you to see if you can find any bumblebees. If it's late enough, it might be too early in the spring to see some bees out. Might have to warm up a little bit more. Maybe next week we'll see some bees. I haven't seen any at my house yet. So another thing I'd like you guys to do is maybe look up, uh, like I had said, um, look up the, the jobs of the bumblebees and all the different parts of the bumblebee. It might be fun to look into an encycl encyclopedia. Um, and see if you can learn about bumblebees. All right, guys, thanks for enjoying story time with me today, and I will see you on Friday with an Easter story. All right, guys, take care, bye-bye.